Hi folks, we are back. Here he is beside me, looking disinterested. Oh no, he's not, he's there. Um, Haunted Tour, part two of the London Underground. Next up, the Bakerloo Line. Stay tuned for a story that I genuinely must tell you chilled me to the bone. Stay tuned. Right, so this is the beauty of doing these tours alongside my buddy and fellow ghost tour guide because as we're heading down to Embankment Station and the Bakerloo line ladies and gents Rob is minding me here in case I get knocked <laughs> down by a taxi Rob is going to tell us the story of the horrific death and dismemberment of a lady called Minnie Bonatti Minnie Bonatti let's head inside and have a look around so Minnie Bonatti was a rather unfortunate penniless woman in uh, 1927 who'd taken to earning herself a bit of money on the side by working as a prostitute in Victoria train station. Now one evening while she was working in Victoria's train station she uh, had the rather misfortunate meeting with a man called Jack Robinson. Now Jack Robinson was a 35 year old estate agent, picked up Minnie Bernati in order to engage in some uh, after hours activities. activities. For whatever reason, she ended up dead. Now, Jack Robinson panicked, chopped off her body, bought some uh, brown paper, wrapped all of her limbs in individual brown paper parcels, oh my God. purchased himself a black trunk, put it all in the trunk. Then he hailed himself a cab, and the cab took him to Charing Cross, which is where we are right now. Now, right on the here, third folks. floor of Charing Cross Station in 1927, was the left luggage department so he took this trunk to the left luggage department claimed it had been left on a platform or a train put it in there made his exit four days later on the 10th of may the people working at the left luggage department noticed quite a pungent smell Ooh, rotting flesh coming from the trunk he deposited once they'd opened it up they of course found the Rather unfortunate remains of poor Minnie Bernati. Now, Robinson was tracked down, he was arrested. The when they interviewed him, he was claiming she simply fell, knocked her head and died, and he panicked in the moment. But if he had asphyxiated her, as well as knocking her out, then obviously there was some premeditation there in the, uh, in the murder. So, well, whether, however he did it, um, he, was, he was hanged. He was hanged a few months later in August 1927. And her ghost is set to haunt this area. Her ghost is now said to haunt Charing Cross Station. Do you know what I found most interesting? The most terrifying ghosts mm. that we've come across so far were all in one way dissected and dismembered. Oh, yeah. The majority of them. So they do say that spirits <clears throat> well, yeah, were the mother of the death. Well, no, the, the theory is that if you're chopped up, then your spirit can't get to the afterlife that's right can't. It that's has, right so as well as killing someone in in the flesh you're also killing them in the spirit form in the paradise for paradise yeah, as well because but the thing is i feel like the more horrific the death the more tor torture of course, the soul, yeah, of course. The more to torture the spirit essentially well they so, do say if you were uh, religious sort of texts they say when the rapture comes only those bodies that are whole will be raptured so when you chop someone up, you're literally saying, that's it, you're stuck here forever now. Stuck here in kind of stuck limbo, here isn't in it? limbo. Yeah. You're they you won't always go to say heaven, people, you won't go to the afterlife. Spirits are people that aren't with unfinished business. Oh, of course, yeah. And yeah. if your arms and legs get chopped off, then... <laughs> Evidently you have. Yeah. Most likely it's revenge, isn't it? Right, next up is the Bakerloo line, ladies and gents. And this involves just a random lady in London taking a photograph of her family on the underground, some sinister apparition of a spectre in the back of her photo. More to come on the Bakerloo line, which is said to be one of the most haunted tube lines in London. So this takes us onto the London Underground, the Bakerloo Line, folks. Now, the Bakerloo Line goes from Harrow and Wilston in northwest London to Elephant and Castle in South London. And it goes via the West End. So 
Piccadilly Circus, Covent Garden, Warwick Avenue, Baker Street, all the major tube stations in the West End. It serves 25 stations in all, 15 of which are underground with over 14.4 miles. Open between 1906 and 1915, it's got several tales of spooky encounters and paranormal activity. Well, we're going to go all the way back to 1983. This story takes us back to a photograph actually taken by a Londoner by the name of Karen Collette. She snapped a photograph of her nephew in the carriage on the Bakerloo line. This is 1983, remember, we have no edits, we have no Photoshop, we have no, I don't know, what is it the girls do, filters, is that what girls do today? The filtering. So she went home and the photo had to be developed in the actual, well, photography shop, was it? I guess Camera I mean, shop, I Camera guess. shop, Kodak shop. The old school development of photos. And when they developed the photo, a sinister image appeared to be lurking behind the youngster in the background. Now we want to jump on the tube because I just want to show you where she would have taken the photograph. And we'll use Rob as my model. And that sinister man in the background was appeared to be sitting in what was an electric chair. Yeah. And he had sparks of electricity coming out from his hands now. So when she saw the image, something kept niggling at her. She felt like she was familiar with this image of the sinister specter behind her nephew. And she was familiar with the image because she had recently visited Madame Tussaud's Chamber of Horrors. She had come across the figure of a man in an electric chair and his name was Bruno Hauptmann. Now, Bruno Hopman was a German carpenter who had been accused, tried and convicted of the kidnapping and killing of a 20-month-old son of Charles Lindbergh, an American aviator, military officer, author, activist and inventor. He made the first non-stop solo flight from New York City to Paris in 1927 in the spirit of St. Louis. Hauptmann's trial was known as the trial of the century because of the infamy of Charles Lindbergh at the time. In 1936, he was executed by electric chair in Trenton at the New Jersey State Prison, proclaiming his innocence until his last breath. But back to Karen's photo, years after it was first developed, photographic experts and an analysts examined the photograph and they had found there was absolutely no way this photograph had been edited or doctored in any way. And keep in mind, this was the old style photographs on actual film. So how in fact did this sinister specter appear then in her photograph? Now, there has been several theories over the years. First was double exposure. However, although the figure in the photo was identified as Hauptmann and Karen had been to Madame Tussauds, she hadn't gone there with her family and she hadn't taken any photos inside so there would be no double exposure on the film. Some suggested it must have been a poster advertising Madame Tussauds cham Chamber of Horrors on the London Underground. But when Madame Tussauds was contacted directly, they said that no such poster existed anywhere on the underground and that image had never been used in advertising. On top of that, years later, Karen attended a psychic medium. Now she accompanied with her friend who was a technique medium who was hoping to contact some of her dead family relatives. And she was only there as a friend capacity. But after the psychic and spiritual reading, reading of her friend, the medium immediately came to speak to Karen directly and told her that he had a message for her beyond the grave. And that message came from Bruno Hauptmann who had said to her he was innocent of the crimes he had been convicted of, but he wasn't innocent of another crime. So the mystery of the sinister spectre of the photograph on the Bakerloo line still remains. 
Think of it what you will. Now, whilst we're here in Elephant in Castle, we have another haunting story that Rob is going to take us to the girl on the train story. What's the story with the ghostly spectre in Elephant and Castle? Well, many people say there's many ghosts that occur here at Elephant Castle, tapping noises, people feel like they're being pushed around. But the creepiest one, according to many of the underground drivers, is there's a mysterious girl who, Ooh. when they're checking CCTV or their mirrors, they see the girl get on the train, but she never gets off. And the same girl is sitting boarding the train over and over and over again. And no one knows to this day who she is. Possibly a suicide yeah. victim of some sort or something. Yeah. Now, also, there's the mysterious case of the Bakerloo apparition, isn't there? So, mm. if we sit up there just for one minute, I want to show you. So, apparently, what happens is you will be sitting here <coughs> and the reflection of a guy, if you can sit beside me, Rob, we'll get an idea, appears right inside the window here where Rob is waving. I think it's pretty obvious that the ghost, the apparition of what we saw as Rob there is obviously not seated beside me. So you have the little screaming girl on and off the tube. You have the terrifying apparition of Bruno Hauptmann and the mysterious passenger that rides alongside you on the Bakerloo line. Okay, folks, so the next stop on our haunted tube tour is this station. We are on the Whitechapel High Street and we are in the middle of the Jack the Ripper territory, ladies and gentlemen, with its gruesome history as the site of five of the most horrific murders in London history. This is Oldgate Station. Unfortunately, one of the most unremarkable stations to look at, but as we're heading in, it still has the reputation of being one of the most haunted tube stations in all of London. Now, allegedly, ghost sightings here have been terrifying passengers and staff for decades. Now, there's quite a bit of history in this area. It is situated on top of one of the biggest plague pits in London. It's not surprising that phantom footsteps and ghostly apparitions of people dressed in rags are just a small few of the reported encounters at this station. And as we're heading down here, it's important to note that so much paranormal activity has been recorded here. It is widely reported that the staff here actually have a log book, book set up exclusively for ghost sightings in this station. So let me take you down here because one of the strangest stories involves train tracks you see directly in front of you. Now it's a little noisy obviously with the trains but the, one of the more reported stories involves a rail worker who happened to stumble onto these very tracks. And on the live rails, he received a 20,000 volt electric shock, which knocked him out instantly. Miraculously, he survived that electric shock, but there at the scene, there was reported to be others who had said they saw a bright figure now, this spectral lady was seen after the man had fallen. However, it is widely disputed as to whether or not the lady was a friendly spirit who was saving him or basically consoling him after this terrible fall. But a more sinister explanation was that he had attempted, she had attempted to push him and that she was actually responsible for his fall. But whether or not either sighting has any credibility again the location of the plague pit right underneath here and the plague pit very close by in liverpool street station plus the site of some of the most gruesome murders in london's victorian history 
It's not surprising how tortured souls would haunt this terrifying station, said to be the most haunted station in London. What I wouldn't give you guys to get a look at that logbook that apparently records all the spectral sightings here in Allgate Station. If you haven't yet watched our London's Ghost and Gruesome Pass video, check out this clip for the story of one of London's longest documented hauntings at Farringdon Station. I want to take you back to the very dark history of the brutally murdered young girl called Anne Naylor. At 13 years of age, she had spent most of her life as an orphan working in a workhouse with her sister. And that's what's commonplace. These young girls were regularly sent to work as apprentices in local businesses, whether it be factories or haberdasheries. But unfortunately for Annie, she met the brutal duo of mother and daughter, Sarah and Sally Metyard. The sadistic duo were quick to anger and were sadistic in their punishments of these young apprentice girls. They regularly starved them, beat them, and subjected them to hours and end of torture. Annie wasn't quite healthy enough to keep up with the demands of the work, got the brunt of the abuse. And one morning, fearing for her life, she attempted an escape. Regretfully, she was caught by the young Sarah Metchard, who brought her back and viciously beat her with a broomstick on the bed. Not content with the sadistic punishment, her mother Sally entered the room and decided she would tie her to the door for three days using ropes. After three days, her lifeless body terrified the younger apprentices. When the Metyards finally realized that they had brutally murdered her, they attempted to conceal their crime by sending food up to Annie's room in an attempt to deceive the young apprentices. They even left the doors of the attic open and had said for a period of time that Annie had escaped. Brutally, they stuffed her body in a chest and left it there for two months. But of course, the smell of rotting flesh became all too apparent in the Milner's shop. So they attempted a dissection of Annie's body and attempted to burn parts of her flesh. The smell of the putrid burning flesh became so overpowering and obvious they knew they had to get rid of Annie's remains. They dissected her corpse and they took her down here to a place called Chick Lane where now Farrington Station is located and attempted to throw her dissected corpse over the wall. Quite terrifyingly, the following day when her body's remains were found, a coroner had disregarded it as remains that had been used for anatomical research by the surgeons in the area. Was she ever going to lay a rest? Would she ever seek her revenge? That came four years later. Over to you, Rob. So for the next four years after Annie's murder, this particular spot of London, which is now Farringdon Underground Station, was haunted by the scream of a girl. Now this scream was heard so often that people in the local area just assumed the area was haunted. They just wrote it off, wrote it off as a ghost. Now, four years later in 1762, a young man living in the area had just had his girlfriend move in with him after his girlfriend had had a particularly rough fight with her mum. His girlfriend's name was Sally Metyard. Now, he just off the cuff one day mentioned to this girl, oh, by the way, now you're living in this area, just to let you know, there's a ghost of a scream of a little girl in this particular area over here. Sally Metyard broke down in tears and she admitted to her boyfriend, well, that's where me and my mum dumped the remains of a little girl four years ago that we killed. Now the boyfriend was horrified, so he decided to go to the authorities. But of course he didn't want to get his girlfriend in trouble. So he went to the authorities, told them it was her mum, Sarah Metyard, who'd done the whole crime by herself, not believing his girlfriend would be punished as well. Well, sadly for him, his plan didn't work. Both of the Metyard women were arrested. They were tried, found guilty, and hanged. Now, during the executions, the older Sarah Metyard, the mother, she passed out in shock. She couldn't believe she was going to be executed. She fainted on the journey to the gallows. Once they got to the gallows, they tried to revive her using smelling salts. But to no avail. To no avail. So what they, they did executed is her. they executed her limp, unconscious body. As for her daughter, Sally Metyard, well, she went to the gallows screaming in floods of tears, begging them not to take her life. 
which of course is exactly what young Annie Naylor had probably done four years earlier. To this day, ladies and gentlemen, that screaming spectre can be heard all over Farringdon Station, particularly late at night. The terrifying, haunting screams of a girl who eventually came back to exact her revenge. And that's it for today, folks. Thanks for coming with me on part two of London's Haunted Underground Stations. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Remember, if you'd like to book a private tour with me, find my contact information in the description below. See you soon.